Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your favorite quarterback hater, Robert Mathis, and you're listening to the For the Culture Podcast. This is the For the Culture Podcast. I am your host, Jason Spears. Back with a quick update. The Colts have re-signed TJ Carey to a one-year deal. Numbers not disclosed. I think this is a nice move for the Colts. Definitely adds depth to the secondary. I've talked about TJ Carey's versatility a ton and why I wanted him back and why I thought he was so important to the Colts. The veteran presence, the ability to play both cornerback positions outside and inside, and he played free safety for the Raiders for multiple years, so you can use him as a backup there. It will allow defensive coordinator Matt Eberflus to have some freedom, allows him to move some guys around, It also gives T.J. Carey an opportunity to earn playing time at either corner or free safety if there's an injury. And he could, theoretically, you know, just looking at the situation, win the second starting position outright in training camp. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think he's going to be the, the starter opposite of Xavier Rhodes, but... You never know, because you look at it, Rock had a really bad end of the season last year, and TJ got a lot more snaps than he did. And Marvell Tell, who I love and I think is going to be a really, really good player and is going to compete for a starting job this year, didn't play last year. So I think this is a really, really good opportunity for TJ to play a big role in the secondary. Certainly can help the young players. And, I mean, listen, man, he was a revelation last year. Struggled a little down the stretch. But for the most part, I thought he was outstanding last year. Thought he did a really, really good job. Made some big time plays and was a, you know, really a pleasant surprise in our secondary and on our defense. So it's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is an outstanding job by the Colts re signing him. They were very close to getting this done a couple days ago. They had to iron some things out. I I tweeted that out a couple days ago that they were really close to, to having it locked up. And they finally got it done. And, uh, you know, I'm pumped up, man, because I really think it's a need that maybe, you know, you don't necessarily have to spend a a pick on a corner this year. I mean, you can if you are able to recoup the picks, but you can really attack that defensive line, I think. And that's the spot where I think the Colts are really going to go heavy in the draft, which I'll get into more and more the closer we get to the draft. But this is really about just getting TJ back. In the room, so you look at our our, our 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 corner room now. You've got Xavier, you've got TJ, you got Rock, you got Marvell Tell. So those three guys, to me, are going to compete for that outside spot, number two corner, you know, boundary corner. Uh, you got Kenny in the slot. If Kenny gets hurt, TJ can play there, you know. And then you look at our safeties. We signed Sean Davis, who's more of a strong safety, um, not great in coverage. You know, he, he, I remember him coming out of Maryland. I liked him a lot, but he just hasn't he hasn't really fulfilled his potential in the NFL. So that signing doesn't move the needle for me. And I think George Odom is more of a special teams player. I mean, maybe Flues plays him more this year. But I, I, I just think if something was to happen to Blackman, I think they would probably go to TJ. So I just think, you know, it, it's an opportunity for, for him to really get a lot of snaps at multiple spots and really help the team. And then, you know, obviously, to, to round out the room, you've got Isaiah Rogers, who I really like a lot. I think the Colts do as well, but I think he's, you know, he's still growing. He's got to get bigger. He's an outstanding kick returner. And so I, I really like their room now. I, I think, you know, you got guys like Xavier and, and Kenny who are really outstanding and were just really great last year. Kenny's always an outstanding, just a great player, underrated, you know, all that. Uh, and Xavier was great, really, really consistent after the first week, I thought. And you get TJ, who I thought was very consistent, dipped a little at the end, but for the most part, again, like I said, was was really solid. And then Rock, if he can bounce back, I'm sure he's been working hard. And Marvell, I think Marvell Tell, man, you know, I, I really think if he can get back in the swing of things athletically, uh, he he's a stud, and I think he could be our number two corner. In the long run. Not sure about this year, but I, I just... Flus is going to play the best guy. So if it's... You know, I, I think it's going to be a battle between those three guys. You know, Rock, 
and, and Marvell and, and TJ. And, uh, you know, I think probably Marvell or Rock will win that. But if they don't play well, it's good to have that veteran there. So I just wanted to hop on, guys, and uh, let you know what was going on. Good to get him back in the fold. I told you when the offseason started, they wanted to get Danico back. They wanted to get TJ Carey back, and they wanted to get Xavier Rhodes back. Those three guys were their priority. They they got two of the three. They tried to get Danico back at the last second, but it was too late. The Titans got him. So, you know, you, you would have hoped they could get all three done, and they did try. But they got two out of three, and they've still got the draft ahead of them, and I really think you're going to see them attack the defensive line. So I'm not ready to just throw in the towel on the offseason yet, but they've really got to, you know, improve that edge spot. That's definitely the... The edge and and left tackle are are definitely spots where the talent needs to be upgraded, uh, and I'm sure it will be. So with that, I'm going to wrap this up. I should be back. Luke and I should be back together. I know we're going to do a mock draft, as we always do. I think it's going to be the fourth or fifth annual one that we've done. And uh, so we're going to do that, and we'll do a QA and a right before the draft. So a lot going on. Really exciting news. I mean, it's not sexy, you know, as far as the national people go. But for Colt fans, you guys know how good TJ was last year and how important he was to our secondary. So great to get him back on that one-year deal. And, uh, yeah, man, hopefully just uh, you know, keep, we'll keep the ball rolling and, and uh, you know, get some, get some guys in here during the draft and maybe sign a guy, you know, a free agent edge after that. I, I still, I'm still hearing Vernon and Kerrigan as the two guys they're interested in. But, you know, teams cut guys all the time, and you saw Maurice Hurst was cut this week, defensive tackle from the Raiders, who I, I think would be a nice addition to the Colts to have in the rotation. Sheldon Richardson was cut. Arden Key was cut. So you're going to see cuts, that, and the Colts are going to, you know, have interest in some of these guys. But as far as I know right now, as far as edge goes, the two guys they're focused on are Kerrigan, or not focused on, but the guys that they're thinking about signing are Kerrigan and also Vernon if he checks out medically. And I, I don't think either one of those things will happen until after the draft. But we'll see what happens, guys. So I'll go ahead and wrap this up. I think I've been on a little too long. I'm kind of babbling. But I just wanted to, to get on and kind of let you know where we're at. Well, you know, give you the good news. And uh, no one's reported it yet other than Kenny Moore. Like, no, none of the big guys have reported it yet. So for the culture was first on this. You know, a lot of people give us hate. We're on this one, guys. So uh, we'll talk to you soon. And, uh, yeah, we should be back this week with another video, probably draft-related, here on the For the Culture Podcast.